also the church in Malaysia started that renewal in 1976 as a milestone. And after that, we have Peninsula Malaysia Pastoral Convention 1, 1986. Uh, in short, PMPC 2, 1996. Uh, PMPC 3, 2006. And now we are journeying towards PMPC 4, 2016. But in all these conventions, the focus has always been the same, right? The reflections, the prayer, the discernment focused on the basic option that the church had taken in 1976, which is the formation of basic ecclesial communities. Ajahn Mato is the updating of the church that uh, came about after Vatican Council II, when Pope John the Twenty-Third opened the windows of the church and wanted fresh air to come in. So we'll get the team to come and we get all the priests together and start this Ajornamento. Later on the name came Ajornamento. So they got the permission of the bishops, three bishops at the time, who agreed. We said, okay, we require one month. The priests must all come together, stay in the college general and attend this course and live together. And that was a big uh, kind of a, like can you say, for some it was a shock, for some it was a joy. <laughs> so they trained lay people in every parish to do the necessities. So that's a thing, the community doesn't mean only Catholics, but all those in that area. But the Catholics are brought together to charge their batteries, so to say, and go out and be the light of the world. You see, there was a focus for all laity, religious and uh, priests, a focus that was spelt out and clearly uh, enunciated in this Red Book, that uh, our pastoral direction. So they were all working together, talking a common language, commitment to train people for this level, at this level, because it was a common focus that we were concentrating on and carrying out in our pastoral ministry, whether preaching or organizing seminars or even speaking to the people in different uh, categories. There was this great sense of unity among the priests. Highlighting the peninsula Malaysia Pastoral Convention II in 1996. And the focus was on the church that is called to be an effective witness to Christ. So the new way of being church, it changed also at the PMC, not new Christian communities as what formulated in 76, but ecclesial communities. So B E C, not B C C, and therefore, like reflecting a church, it is a localized community. Today we are called to live our faith in community. In other words, we must have a sense of belonging to our B E C. The B E C, which may be referred to as the grassroots church, brings together people of the same faith in the neighborhood. The Eucharist. The Word of God, prayer and Christian love are fundamental to the life and well-being of the BEC. The statement of PMPC 3, that is 2006, our basic option as church is to build basic ecclesial communities, BECs, that reflect our primary communion as people of God. This basic option goes hand in hand with our ongoing pastoral priorities in the areas of unity, formation, integral human development, interreligious and ecumenical dialogue, youth, family, and social communications. Okay? So we see that there has been a very, very clear 
Continuity in the journey of the church. To make the church the house and the school of communion, that is the greatest challenge for the new millennium that we are beginning. So, uh, I recall uh, the last PMPC, which was PMPC 3, the theme was Sentire Cum Ecclesia, which was to think and feel with the church. To think, um, indicating the mind, um, and to feel, indicating the heart. To think and feel with the church. I think fundamentally we have to ask ourselves, what is church? So PMPC 4 is very important because it helps to chart the church the next 10 years where it's going. Therefore, it's important that we plan uh, looking at what our current situation is and we are able to plan for the next 10 years. If you know PMPC, it means Peninsula Malaysia Pastoral Convention 4. Uh, my hope and my dream is the next time we meet, 10 years' time, it will be MPC, Malaysian Pastoral Convention. Today, we have Sabahan Sarawakians here in our shores of Peninsular Malaysia and we have also many Peninsular Malaysians in Sabah and Sarawak. So, we need to be united as one Malaysian church. Therefore, among the bishops, I think it's important that we are able to also think and feel as one Malaysian church. That's where the unity, uh, unity is important, first and foremost among our bishop. Yeah, every decade there was a challenge. I think ever since 1986, uh, that was the PMPC one. Youth was identified as one of the priority groups for which we had to look into. Many young people today still regard confirmation as a kind of graduation. And the next time we encounter them will be when they get married. And the question is, what happens from the time they are confirmed and to the time of marriage? The lack of knowledge of their identity as a Catholic, number one, and also of who they are. I feel that in this, ex this last five years of experience, many are sort of stressed out by what society has to say about them, family, the sort of expectations for a young person, you know, uh, what career to choose, um, how they should interact in school with people, you know, the kind of personalities they should adapt. So they end up becoming young people that really don't know the core of who they are and who they've been created to be. I quote St. Catherine of Siena, she said, be, be who you were meant to be and you will change the world. And sadly, we, we try to be something that we are not as Catholic young people. We have to actually tell youth, or tell ourselves that youth ministries are not just activity-based, that we do not come just because Okay, we are 18 to 24, so we just belong to this group. Uh, we come every Sunday or once in a month, we have a certain activity and we move off. But to actually look at youth ministries and single adults ministries as communities, so that those who belong in that community, this, our young people, us, we can come together to pray together, to be in a community and finally to go out for mission together. I feel there should be more efforts to equipped pastoral workers la, to, to be able to journey with the young people um, and to handle their issues and their brokenness. Not so much I give you classroom teaching style, but someone who can, I can voice, be who I am with, voice my opinions. And from there, I am drawn into knowing the, the gift that I am. The challenges that we face is also the relevance of faith in our working life. Uh, today, work takes up a whole lot of time. So I believe that we should not look at faith as just a different compartment, but to actually look at faith as part of our life. It's, it's not just part, but faith is our life. And then comes our work. So in the co correlated needs under IHD or Integral Human Development, we are focusing on the migrants because influx of new uh, 
people who have come into this country and this is one of the important needs in our country now. So uh, as AOHD, we are also focusing on this area to assist these migrants who have come into our country in different areas of life to help them to give proper education. And uh, we also have refugees, uh, Myanmaris and uh, Sri Lankans. And uh, we, we are also forming, uh, sending them to schools to equip them with proper education so that they will be able to move on to different countries. And uh, when it comes to uh, migrants, quite a number of them are asking the question why we should help them, why we should help them. They have left their country and come here. We, uh, we should be uh, taking care of our own local poor. And these are the issues that we are fa facing. But at the same time, as for scriptural uh, reference, God has uh, highlighted to us and even Pope Francis also talking to us about this to care for the migrants who are uh, at our doorstep to help them to move forward with life. Uh, my aspirations regarding this uh, uh, BMPC4 and uh, the outcome of, from, from this is all the liturgical formations and uh, catechetical formations that we receive it's empowering the people spiritually, helping the people to experience God in the Holy Sanctuary of God and also in the formation centers in the church environment. And this need to be translated into action into uh, poor, attending to the poor's need. And when we're able to do this, then uh, we are already living the gospel. Uh, help people to catch fish rather than feed them with fish. So that will help them to move forward with life. So they have learned, learned a trait and then they will move forward with life. Uh, as ISG members, all of you are encouraged and empowered with the formation given by AOHD to do this in your own respective parishes and BECs. Social communication is important today because that is the world today. Communication, because it's in your hands, on your palms. Every child, whatever age they are, it's in their palms. So we can communicate and we reach out to much more than what the, the apostles reached out. So this, this uh, form of communication is the most important right now. The, the, the challenges, besides the negative aspect, I think the other challenges are more positive. More positive. You can reach out to a wider world. But the negative aspect of the faith is the biggest challenge that we are facing right now. We need to have full-time professional people in the media world set up by the diocese with regards to social communications. We can address problems, youth problems, all kinds of pro problems through social communications. So we need to set up a body in, with regards to social communications in the diocese. Now, come, uh, with this coming PMPC, I'm hoping that uh, we will be able to uh, approve and agree to the setting up of the social communications ministry in the diocese, which is needed very, very urgently. I think uh, at the moment is the attendance at the BC gatherings. I wouldn't take it uh, very hard because it is the demands of today, uh, priorities in life, especially in my BC, we are very young families. So mothers have to juggle between children, career and personal matters. And on top of it, um, Wednesday seems to be a challenge. Uh, yes, our youth and young adults, you see that uh, there's a big decline in their involvement. Why? Because uh, demands of work, they have to stay back longer and students, you know, going for extra classes. And uh, there's a big generation gap between the young people and the uh, other adults in the um, community. Um, my observation after the last PMPC is that formation for BCs, BC leaders are more structured especially in our parish, before you take office or you take the role of a BC leader, you need to go through a program. And also for the BC core team members, there's a formation given to them. Well, after this PMPC, we hope to see personal development in our parishioners, where they improve their faith, uh, knowledge, 
spiritual knowledge, whereby they live a life of action, being a witness to others, and also a selfless and committed to community, yeah, and enrich themselves with a more spiritual knowledge. Second thing is the strengthening of family ties. We like this PMPC to address issues where families should come together to pray, to live together, where children should come back and care for their senior citizens. And we want to educate the young on their duties. The, ch the challenges that are facing family life today is that a lot of our young people have stopped going to church. And because they have found no meaning to coming to church. You know, they after they finish their their, uh, con their their form five, they are confirmed. They, they stop coming to church. So that seems to be a, a, a rising concern. That's one of the things that that, that uh, we have noticed. A another thing is uh, a lot of couples who, who, who uh, enter into marriage do not see the permanency of marriage. You know, they go into it thinking that you know this is something which is for a time and then later on, you know, they, they can think otherwise. So this is one area which will eventually break down family life. What was in the past very good, our parents have held on to it. Now, the, the younger people of today don't seem to have those values where marriage is sacred, it's, it's a permanent thing. Not all, but a good number, a good number. Okay, families today are actually bombarded with a lot of secular values. We find this because of social media, all of our children, our youth are, you know, so in touch with their iPhones and, and iPads or whatever. So you find the world's values coming in and, you know, somehow or other, God's plan, God's values being slowly eroded, which is so sad, you know, and that's why it's one of the things when Joseph said, um, you know, our confirmants after Form 5, they don't come to church anymore. And then we see them next when they come for marriage preparation. And in between, the world has taken over. Okay, what, what we'd like to do is, uh, currently Family Life Ministries are not in all parishes. Uh, we will, uh, one of our goals is to ensure that, you know, during our term in office, is to ensure that all uh, parishes in our diocese are, uh, you know, have form a family life ministry where they will be linked to the Archdiocesan Commission of the Family Life and we can actually be of uh, service to them and uh, support each other. In a diversity of spiritualities, to get to the heart of the spirituality of Jesus himself that intimate, personal relationship with his father and his passion for his father led him to compassion for people, people of all walks of life. And that is what the church has to come back to in its ongoing journey. At PMPC 1, 2, I think it was a lot, it was very clergy-centered. You know? Everyone debated for father to do this, father to take the lead, father this and that. But I think it is time and it's overdue, I think, for the laity to also step up and, and be co-responsible for the future of the church. And when I say co-responsible, I also hope that our clergy, maybe bishops also, to to empower our laity uh, leaders who are experts in their own right and to collaborate and to be co-responsible to work together for the betterment of the church and also the growth and how we can build our nation, not just Peninsula but Malaysia as a whole.